Now, how are you feeling? You got John Riggs here talking about the great games from FCI for the NES in this video. It's part of a regular series where I rank all the games from a certain publisher for certain systems. And a fantastic introduction to some of these games, and even kind of a throwback too. You're like, I remember renting that once upon a time. I forgot all about it. It's what this type of video is all about, really. FCI covered four AD&D games. We're gonna cover all of them right now. Just get them out of the way. Dragon Strike, I think, is actually pretty cool. Now, when I think of AD&D, I think of the roll of the dice and the build your characters and all that. But this game, you fly around as a dragon. It didn't even need to be AD&D, because it could have been called Dragon Strike. Like, you know? I like how you can fly above or fly more to ground level and you can switch back and forth as needed. Great for dodging enemy attacks, great for, well, attacking the enemies as well. And each level kind of has its own goals, for instance. Like it tells us, you know, do this and then you can move on to the next stage. So you do that and you move on to the next stage. As you're flying around in these pretty decent sized levels, these stages, they're not super huge, but you're just trying to get through and do the tasks that requires. And the tasks usually require you taking down the other dragons before you get taken down yourself, of course. The art design could have been better, but I think this one's a lot of fun. I'm gonna give this one a B. We have AD&D Heroes of the Lance. This game is pretty terrible. I gotta be honest with you. This game, man, you move too slow. You have like a lot of playable characters, sure. Uh, but man, it's just I mean, just the how you move and how you have to enter the different rooms and walk up and how you have to fight the other enemies. I mean, yeah, like I said, it has a lot of characters. You can use your magic as well. This game does have some things going on for itself, but gameplay alone, ooh, this, ooh, man. They, and this is a game from FCI. If this was Color Dreams, I would have kind of understood. But this is an FCI game, and it's an AD&D game. It's a little bit more on par with what AD&D is compared to the other one, but still not a good game. I'll at least give it a D because I come back to it every once in a while just to remind myself. And again, you might like this game yourself, and that's one of the good things about these kind of videos. I'm basing it on my nostalgia, not necessarily your nostalgia. However, I'm giving this game a D. Hills Far, as far as the AD&D games go, is the one you want to look for if you find it for a good price. This is the one of the four that's getting up there pretty well in price. Of course, if you have other means to play it, by all means. This one's kind of fun. This one, you actually build your character, and it has a few different gameplay elements, too. Because you can ride your horse, uh, there's also some archery later on in the game, and I've never played all the way through this game, but as much of the game I have played is you basically just go to the towns, and then you go inside buildings, and you have to go inside them. You can just walk around town, and it lets you know, hey, there's a door over here, there's a door over there, and um, you try to pick the lock. And this is one of the first lock-picking type games I remember playing. Um, quick puzzle element, you have to like match the key to where the lock looks like. And then once you're inside, you gotta pillage and plunder before you're caught. So, that's pretty cool, right? This one, this one's all right. I'll give this one a C. And finally, with the AD&D games, we have Pool of Radiance. This one probably is the most, like, I would consider an AD&D game. Like, if you're playing, a, like, like, oh, there's an AD&D game for the NES? Oh, man, fantastic. I hope it's just like the tabletop style. This one's the most like a tabletop style. Still not perfect, but still pretty decent. I mean, the first thing you do is you build your crew, right? You build your party. You go to town, you do the thing, you find the enemies and all that. And then the enemy fight scenes is a little bit more like AD, like with the figurines and all that. It's a little bit more strategy. Like you move your pieces and you have to fight the other enemies, stuff like that. So they have that going on for itself. It could have been better, but as far as the AD&D games go, this one, like I said, probably not my favorite, but it's probably the most like an AD&D if you're looking for licensed AD&D for your NES. Like there's four of them, but this one's the most like it. And I'll give this one a C. Bard's Tale, they actually made a port on the NES, and it's all right. Those style of games where like, you're looking down the corridor and you have to like, you know, turn and give you that first person perspective, that first person view, which was very cool for the NES, but sometimes can also kind of throw you off. Like you don't remember exactly where you're going and stuff, but at least this game has some stuff to help you out to find out where you're going. And then fight scenes, battle scenes, when you run into an enemy, typical RPG style. So that's gotta be kind of cool too. Kind of combining the best of both worlds. And this one, there's a, there's a fan base for a Bard's Tale, so that's pretty cool too. Me, personally, I could take it or leave it. It's a C.
Break time on the NES from FCI. Little pool, little billiards, little snooker, little whatever you want to call it. Eight ball, nine ball. Um, there's two player mode. It's 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 a it's a great pool game. It may be. I don't know if side pockets better, but I like at least on this one how your index, your uh, your icon goes to where you want to shoot the ball, if that makes sense. Which I know is not even the proper terminology. But some games, you just show like, you know, like where around the cue ball do you want to hit? And this one is actually like, I want the cue ball to go here. And then depending on the power, um, will depend on the trajectory, you know, stuff like that, whatever the case is. This one's fun, it's generic. I mean, it's pool, but it's still kind of fun. This one's also a C. Dr. Chaos is a game I should have beaten by now. Dr. Chaos is a game I, I didn't grow up with, but I did get when I was in high school. And I grew up with the NES. My passion of NES was mostly middle school. That's how old I am. It carried on to high school with the Super Nintendo and the Genesis, but I was still playing NES as well. It wasn't until high school I got Dr. Chaos. So still got it from back in the day, but it plays like an earlier game. And I like this style of game. I, I was a big fan of Goonies 2, and this game reminded me a lot of Goonies 2, where you go inside the rooms and you can search around, open things up, um, find items, and you also use those rooms to exit the room somewhere, somewhere else to go to a different part of the castle or to the backyard or, or the, you know, the basement or whatever it is. It is an early Nintendo game, so we have to consider that when it comes to graphics, when it comes to hit detection, when it comes to sound, uh, but still, I think it's a lot of fun. And it's that one game, um, there's about five, maybe that'll be another video for another time, but there's about five NES games off the top of my head that's just like, what has stopped me from beating this game? What stopped me from actually playing all the way through this game? This is one of them. I still like it a lot, and I'm gonna give this game a B. What's up with the highlight, really? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you see this game at conventions, it, it always goes for super cheap. Um, I have a friend of mine who unironically loves this game, and uh, Jeremy, you're insane, but this game, I think it's pretty cool. There, it has an element to it, a lot like Ease. Like you, you've played Ease 1 and 2, maybe you played Ease 4, I guess you'd include that one in there too, um, where instead of slashing your sword, you just run into him. You just crash into him. Now, if you run into him, uh, you're in your shield mode, your defend mode, but if you hold your A button, then you're in attack mode, so you have to like, you know, time that out so when you run into an enemy, you're attacking them, um, or if they're gonna run into you, you, you know, let go of your A button and, you know, then they, um, then you don't take damage because you're, you're blocking their attacks. It's a little hard to figure out with the graphics for the time and everything, but bigger area to explore. It is an earlier Nintendo game, so again, consider that when you look into this game. Uh, but there's a charm to this game, but I, th I think it's worth um, at least looking at for a moment. I'll give this game a C. Lunar Pool, another pool game from FCI. Man, they love their pool, apparently. This game is different. This game doesn't have as many options as Break Time, but it's still a pool game, and it plays kind of similarly. You shoot, I mean, it's it's pool. I mean, there's a, there's a few pool games for the NES, and this is just another one to add to the list, and historically, one of the cheapest official NES games that you can ever grab. And, you know, if you find it for two bucks, it's worth two bucks, you know? Might find it for a dollar, it's definitely worth a dollar. It's Lunar Pool, and I think it's okay. And I'm gonna give this game also a C. Mag Max was an arcade style game that when I first played it, I was like, this is definitely an arcade game, but I've never seen it in any of my arcades ever. But it just looks like that and feels like that. Not like Zaxxon so much, um, different angle on that but it still gives you that kind of playing field where you're, it's an auto scroll and then you can kind of move left and right, um, or in this case, up and down to, um, to shoot the other enemies. And you can also build yourself along the way. You start off as a little spaceship, but then you kind of become this robot by picking up these other items. And the more pieces of this robot you pick up, the more uh, bullets you're shooting is basically how that works out. It's a unique one. It's an interesting one. It is an earlier arcade game, um, very, it's, it's it's very very interesting and very unique. It, unique where you can build your own robot, but it's still kind of a basic shooter, if that makes any sense at all. It's a C, if that makes any sense at all. If you like this style of video, make sure you're subscribed because just because you're subscribed, it doesn't always ensure that you'll get the notification or anything, and it'll ensure that you have a better chance of seeing my next videos 
as suggested on your homepage. I would really appreciate it. Phantom Fighter is a game I should also like, but the hit detection or how you attack, the, the how you attack is fine. Well, let me, go, let me go back a little bit. So in Phantom Fighter, you go around and you go into these rooms and you have to fight the Kyonshi, the Jangshi. They're the, uh, the, the Chinese zombie vampire jumping ghosts, I guess. Um, stiff legged, stiff arm, and they kind of jump into you. Uh, the problem is your punch and your kick don't uh, go as far. Like they, because their arms are always sticking out, chances are you're gonna get hit in the face a lot. Uh, when they turn around, when you try to turn around, um, and it's just, it doesn't, the fighting element isn't very optimal. The rest of the game, I mean, I mean the animation I think is really nice. The graphics are fine. Uh, there's a lot going on for this game, except for that hit detection. If you could attack them, um, or if you could move a little bit more smoothly, um, and then predict where they're going to be based on their jumping patterns and all that, I think I would like this game a lot. Uh, but I like this game enough to give it a C. If it wasn't for that fighting stuff. <laughs> you know. Psychross, like Mag Max, is another like just arcade game that I swear it's an arcade game, but I never saw it in any of my local arcades. I don't think it was a Japanese only arcade machine. Maybe it was. You can correct me if I'm wrong. It's another. I mean, it's like a race, but it's a it's a racing, uh, scooting, shooting, defeat the other enemies <laughs> kind of game. I remember I grabbed this because I thought it was going to be. This is me being naive. Uh, when I saw this and I saw the back of the box. I thought it was going to be a futuristic sci-fi excite bike, and boy was I wrong. However, it wasn't terrible. I'm good for a level or two, and I'm like, okay, that's that's enough for now. And I, I'll still play it, you know, for a level or two or once in a while, just to check it out for a second again. And again, it's not bad. It's just it could have been a lot more. And I think it's just because it's based more on the arcade game, and the arcade game, of course, is a quarter muncher, so it doesn't want you to live very long. It's a C. FCI made three Ultima games, and I'm ranking all three of them differently and individually. So the first one, Ultima Exodus, which I believe is Ultima 3, ported over to the NES. Uh, this was the other RPG, and this was during a time when Americans, stereotypically, didn't really get RPGs. And we had Dragon Warrior, Final Fantasy wasn't out yet, and then there was Ultima. It wasn't like an action slash, you know, it wasn't like a Legend of Zelda, but it gave you a little bit more time to think about your next move. It gave you a little bit more time to uh, strategize on what you're gonna do next. The fact that you could attack the townsfolk, I mean, hello, you can kill the king. Well, you can try. But like RPGs now, which is kind of nice to compare it to, you go to these towns, you can talk to the townsfolk, and when you leave, when you go into an enemy, the enemy turns into like a battlefield, which I thought was pretty cool. And then if they're like way far away, you can launch a missile at them, or you can attack them from long distance, which is great. Or you can go up closer to them, and then attack them that way, which is also fine, but if you have the chance, you want to attack them from long distance so they don't get you back. But they're going to do that maybe later on, too. So the first Ultima game, I want to give this one a C. And then the next one for the NES, Ultima Quest of the Avatar, this one's excellent. This one introduced me way before Skyrim or Oblivion. This one had the, at the beginning of the game, it tells you, are you more about this or are you more about this? Would you rather this or would you rather that? Um, and that builds your character of like who you're gonna be uh, for, for the game. Which I thought was pretty nice. That was kind of fun. I loved the fact on this one where it has like the thick forest that you don't, don't see anything. And then when you go into the forest and that's all you can see is like the forest. I love that. I mean, cause before we'd have like Dragon Warrior where like you're, you know, dark cave or whatever and you can only see the little light, light, you know, light around you or something like that. But this one's like that for the forest. I, thought, I just thought that was, you know, artistically nice. Fighting wise, same style of fighting. This one has an auto feature too. So if you're just like, I trust what it's gonna do, just keep hitting auto, you're good. Out of all the Ultimate games, big fan of this one. I'll give this one a B. Then Ultima Warriors of Destiny. Oh boy, this game is rough. The perspective is weird. And I understand this perspective isn't the first time. I, we saw this perspective in Hillsfar when you're actually inside the houses and everything. But it just looks, it's like the, the way you move. I mean, like just like how the screen scrolls with you or doesn't <laughs> for, the, for that matter, or, or tries to or struggles. Um, it, it's, it, it's hard to look at this game and take it seriously and try to play it like for fun or try to play it at all and have it look like this the entire time. 
and I can't do it. And for that, I'm giving this game an F. It, to me, it's just unplayable. World Championship Wrestling, listen to this. World Championship Wrestling! Now after years of playing bad WWF games at the time, we had Pro Wrestling, which is great, uh, Tecmo World Wrestling, probably the best wrestling game on the NES. There is one for the Famicom that we never got. Well, that one's pretty good too. Uh, but this game I thought was a lot of fun compared to the WWF games for sure. Now I'm a huge pro wrestling fan and admittedly I was more into WWF than WCW, but in my house we watched them both. I was just more familiar with WWF. And I was familiar with the wrestlers in this game too. Now you probably know this if you're a wrestling fan or just know about this game, but this game came out in Japan with uh, Japanese wrestlers. So when they ported over to America, um, they just had the same move sets, but then they just replaced them with other wrestlers. They replaced them with, you know, and so the like the finishing moves don't quite match up. Uh, like Ric Flair, for instance, uh, does uh, Giant Baba's kind of like lariat drop or whatever, like, like, like the dropping close, like the clutch drop clothesline thingy. Um, which Ric Flair has never done. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever seen him do that at, at all. So his figure four, you know, it's not in it. But you have guys like Sting where his Japanese port of the character in the Japanese version is Ricky Choshu, who also does a Scorpion Deathlock, so perfect. As much as I love this game, it's still a little hard to lock up because you have to wear them out first. You have to punch them or kick them until they're breathing hard, and then you lock up, and then you do your maneuver every time. Like, you can't block it, you can't reverse it. You just lock up, and then you can whip them to the ropes and do something, or you can body slam them or headbutt them, um, or you get to choose. This was one of the first games you have to get to choose which maneuvers you want to do. If you want to do, uh, you know, some submission holds, um, you know, some, you know, body slam, you know, some more uh, power moves. And the fact that all the wrestlers had at least a finishing move, whether it was their actual finishing move or not, at least it's something. I was a big fan of this game um, and still kind of am too. I wish it, you know, if it didn't have that wear them out to lock up first, I might even give this game an S, because I loved this game so much, but I'm at least giving it an A. I think it's really, really good. One of the best wrestling games, for sure, on the NES. One, two, three. Zanuck, nice shooter here. I uh, got the vertical scrolling shooter. Pretty fun game, pretty fast action. Uh, you die a lot, at least I die a lot, because I'm not very good at this game. Uh, it's, just, it's moving too fast for me, but that does have the power-ups and the abilities that you can get better weaponry along the way. It's just a typical, standard, nice shooter. And the more you play it, the more you hear sounds, the more you hear the music, it sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? Well, this game was published by FCI, but it was developed by Compile, and Compile is the same team who did A Guardian Legend. So if you're like, man, this game sound that has the same sound effects and the music a little, the same kind of mood and everything, man, this game feels a lot like the shooting stages of Guardian Legend. It's because it was developed by the same team who did Guardian Legend. So if that's any indication, Zanuck is pretty cool. Now I liked Guardian Legend for the overworld map part the most, and the shooting stage was just, you know, the thing in the middle. I, it, man, if he didn't move so fast, <laughs> if it didn't suck so much, it might rank higher. Hey, anyway, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna give, I'll get this game a C. How about that? A whole lot of average from FCI, as far as I'm going anyway, but I'm sure you have your own opinions as well. Love to hear from you in the comments. I've been doing this ranking series on YouTube for a while. I have so many others I can rank too. Make sure you check out those other videos. We've got more videos always on the way, so we'll see you very, very, very soon.